Good evening and welcome to my grotto. This is a story about a horrible old man who came to enjoy Christmas. The man's name was Matthew Scrooge. Oh, but he was a tight fisted hand at the grindstone Scrooge. A squeezing, wretching, grasping, scraping, clutching, connives old sinner. Hard and sharp as flint, from where no steel ever struck out Jenny's fire. Secret and self-contained, and such as an oyster. The call within him was like a freeze in the warehouse. It froze his old features, nipped at his pointed nose and shrilled his cheeks. Stiffened his gait, made his eyes red, his thin lips blue, and spoke out shrewdly in his great his voice. But what did Scrooge care? It was the very thing he liked. To edge his way along the crowded aisles and shop, warning all humanity, human sympathy to keep its distance, was what the known ones called nuts to Scrooge. Once upon a time, of all the good days in the year, on Christmas Eve, old Scrooge was in the warehouse. It was cold, bleak, or biting the Steve, you need to hurry up. Once you've finished this, let him know. All this hanging walls needs to come down. Christmas is over. But Matthew, it's only Christmas Eve. I don't care. This is retail. It's 7pm on December the 24th. Christmas is over. You cannot leave until Christmas is wiped off the face of this store. No hanging boards, no Christmas trees, no lights, nothing. Christmas is over. There is no Christmas. Good. And no slacking. What? What do you want to ask me? You look like you want to ask me something. What is it? Well, um, Matthew, yeah. Yes? I was wondering if I could have my personal day tomorrow. Your personal day? Tomorrow? Yes, Matthew, yeah. Well, uh, yes, Matthew, I mean, it is, it is Christmas after all, and, you know, my son, Tiny Glenn, has not been well recently. So let me get this straight. You're asking me for a day off. Yes, yeah. And what makes you think that you deserve a day off? Well, it's because it's Christmas. It's, it's Christmas, you know, it's like family time. You're absolutely having a laugh. The shrink is £3,000 overspent. It's not going to find itself, you know. Please, Matthew, I'll take it unpaid if it helps. I just really want to spend some time with my family. Well, OK then, but I want you back here, 6am, Boxing Day. You need to have the top 20s done by 7. <laughs> it's a deal. Thanks, Matt. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas? Bah, humbug. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Bah, humbug.
You're right, Bab. I'm sure I remember to top that electric key up. Who's there? Show yourself. I'll put you all over the Catch a Continents page and you'll have nowhere to hide. Ooh, Matthew, what a temper you have. Bad day at work, shrink and waste out of control. Who the f are you? Do you not recognise me, Matt? It's Diane. I used to work with you. You're going to be visited tonight by three ghosts. The ghost of Christmas past, present and future. Why? You dislike Christmas, you despise its, its existence, but Christmas is a time for family and also the most important event in the retail calendar. You should embrace Christmas, Matt. But you always hated it. Look at me, I'm cursed. I must spend the rest of eternity haunting the front end as my punishment for my sins. But it's not too late for you, Matt. Ooh, embrace Christmas, Matt. What an idiot. She was a pain in the ass when I worked with her. She's a pain in the ass now. What a load of rubbish. I'm going to bed. Believe it. More disturbance. If I find out who's behind this, I'll park my car in the living room. If I can't have peace and quiet, then they can't have Christmas. Who on earth are you? And what are you doing in my house? I'm the ghost of Christmas past. I've come to take you on a journey. I think someone must have slipped something into my cupper at work. This is too far-fetched. No, I'm quite real. Take my hand and we'll go on a journey. I'm not holding hands with a ghost. Take my hand or the magic won't work. I think the magic stuff kicked in a while ago. OK, then. It would have been in vain for Scrooge to claim that the weather and the hour were not adapted to pedestrian purposes. That bed was warm and the thermometer a long way below freezing. That heat was clad with light in his slippers, dressing gown and nightcap and that he had a cold upon him at that time. The grasp, though, gentle as a woman's hand, was not to be resisted. He rose, but finding that the spirit made towards the window crossed his robe in suffocation. I am mortal, Scrooge remonstrated, and liable to fall. Bear but a touch of my hand there, said the spirit, laying it upon his heart, and you shall be upheld in more than this. As the words are spoken, they passed through the wall and stood upon an open country road with fields on either side. The city had entirely vanished. Not a vestige of it as to be seen. The darkness and the mist had vanished with it, for it was clear, cold, wintry day with snow upon the ground. Here we are. Why, this is Tesco. I've only just come from here. This is Tesco past. You might see a few old places here. Uh, this should remind you of better times when you used to love Christmas. Let's see then. Scrooge found himself in the familiar surroundings of the store from the past. He could see a lot of old faces he knew well and the warehouse is just how he remembered it back then. He was unable to get from one end to the other. Next customer, please. Hello, Matthew. Oh, here we go again. Merry Christmas, Matthew. We're gonna go on a very special journey and visit someone you know oh, very well. Who will it be this time? Take my hand, let's fly there now. And perhaps it was the pleasure that the good spirit had in showing off its power to his, or else it was his own kind, generous, hearty nature, and his sympathy with all poor men that led him straight to Scrooge's general assistant, 
But there he went and took Scrooge with him, holding to his robe, and on the threshold of the door, the spirit smiled, and stopped to bless Stephen Cratchit's dwelling with a sprinkling of his torch. Think of that. Matthew, who do you think lives here? Why, this is Steve-O's house. Wretched dump it is. He lives here with his two kids and his wife. I'm sure his wife's been someone else. I don't look, look, we're not here to discuss who the biological parents are. Everyone here is sharing the joy of Christmas. In fact, here comes Steve-O and Tiny Glyn now. Let's take a look inside. Hey, hello, Dad. Hello, son. Hello, dear. That's a wonderful dinner you got. I missed you. I missed you. I've been sleeping with this all day. How tiny, Glenn? He loved the football. <laughs> we managed to get him a special seat because he's not so well, bless him. But um, we've got a great view of Sunderland getting beaten. He does love seeing Sunderland get beaten. Ah, oh, bless him. Well, let's have a TV dinner then, darling. How's that horrible mean bus of yours? Now don't be like that. The way GP has put this food in front of us. Miserable. He's only human. I hope he has a nice Christmas all this year. At least we have warm food and a roof over our heads. And we have each other. I might be ill and have no money. Or at least I'm not from Sutland. <coughs> <coughs> But what's going to happen to Tiny Glynn? Who knows what the future holds? I'm going to leave you now. Good luck, Matthew. Don't forget what you've learned, and I won't make you sign a training record card. It's cold now. Scrooge looked about him for the ghost and saw it not. As the last stroke ceased to vibrate, he remembered the prediction of old Diane Caldicott, and lifting up his eyes, beheld a solemn phantom, draped and hooded, coming. Like a mist along the ground towards him. Oh! Back in Tesco again. I heard he was able and never even found it sick. What a way to go. To find his house as well. Why didn't nobody find him sooner? Don't be scared, really. Oh no, it's me they're talking about, isn't it? Isn't that Steve O's son, Tony? He looks like he's a store manager. Where are you putting your crackers? Jeez, get those trolleys talking now. <laughs> Oh no, not Tiny Glynn. No! No! Oh, the ghost did it all in one night. What day is this? You boy! What, me? What day is this? It's Christmas Day. I'm off to cook. To, I'm off to the Christmas sales. Boxing Day sales to look for bargains. What is wrong with you? I just love a bargain. Is that huge turkey still in the frozen aisle? What, the one as big as me? That's it. Go and buy it. The store's closed. It's Christmas Day. I don't care. Just make it happen. Steve, why aren't you in work today? What, 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 what are you doing here? But we agreed I didn't have to come to work today. You dirty scumbag, he's not going to work today on Christmas. I know, Steve-O, and I'm going to give you the rest of the week off as well. What, really? Yep, and I've got another surprise for you. I'm going to give you some TL in January. Oh, wow. Wow, this is amazing. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. Come and join us, Matthew. 
We haven't opened our presents yet. Surprise. Glyn, mm. put the telly on. Let's watch a Christmas movie. Okay, Dad. Oh, Tiny Glyn, we've just missed the end of that. Change the channel. Okay, Dad. The Scrooge is better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Glyn, he did not die. He was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as a good old garrison knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alter alteration in, but he let them laugh and little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this world for good at which some people did not have their feel of laughter in the outset. And knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wink up their eyes and grins as have them <laughs> malady in the less attractive forms, his own heart back, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with his friends, but lived upon this total abstinence principle. Ever afterwards, it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, and any alive possessed the knowledge, may they be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Glenn observed, God bless us, every one of us, unless from some